Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and honored guests. And Louise, thank you very much for that very pressurizing intro. I didn't realize I was representing 210 people that could very much speak for themselves, but I'll do the best to, to give you my side of the story. Um, and certainly I do feel a bit both honored to be here tonight, but also very intimidated. Um, to be amongst these people. So I'm neither an educational expert or a powerful politician, but I'm, I'm a, merely a citizen here. Um, come from a small entrepreneurial business. The colorful banner there explains why I don't have a blazer or a tie, we're slightly unconventional. Um, and more importantly, I'm a parent of, of two young kids. So Louise asked me to just give a little bit of a view in my experience and our business experience, my personal experience and our business experience. So, from a personal point of view, I think I attend many of the same brides and dinners that most of the people here attend, and there's a certain group at the table uh, that are very optimistic, which is rave about the uh, rain donation, and then there's somebody counters it with an argument about the crime capital of all. And then we hear about our wonderful resources, and then we hear something about there's so much unemployment. And then somebody goes, but hang on, uh, we're the gateway to sub-Saharan Africa, and then we hear where education's at. So, after many brides, and I love brides, and many newspapers of, and many articles, I came to one conclusion. Actually, no one knows. No one really knew where we were heading with all of this, positive or not. So, Lee, my wife, and myself had to decide what do we do with our two kids? And obviously, we didn't want to do Oz or any of that. So, we decided to do the next best thing, which is give them the best education they can. It's the obvious thing. So, we send them to a good school. We're very fortunate. Our customers are very fortunate to be able to send them to such a school. They're getting a great education and we're really trying to secure a good future for them, get them ahead of the pack. But somewhere there was a problem in this getting them ahead of the pack scenario. It dawned on me that their futures are inextricably intertwined with a whole lot of people that don't have that opportunity to get ahead of the pack. So they're going to be ending up sharing their futures with a great magnitude of people that are potentially going to look at them as nice targets. And it's just dawned on me that, although I'm not backing them out of a great education, I probably have a bigger role to do than just that. I really need to do something more about the total future that they're going to inherit and so on. So that was kind of the one rude awakening one day to say, listen, what we're doing is good, but it certainly isn't good enough. So now I was all inspired to take on education in South Africa. I was planning the E for a good while there. Um, then from a business perspective, we're... We're celebrating our 20th year this year, so obviously as, a, as an organization, we're also trying to do things. I think it's like midlife. You want to do a little bit more than just make money. As an organization, you want to have a bigger agenda. It just is a logic thing. So yet again, education came up as how do we, how do we get involved in the 200 workers that we've got at our factory, bettering their future. So with, armed with both of those motives, I started looking around, and fortunately, through an introduction um, from my school principal to these, I realized within 10 minutes flat that, although I had a good idea, I had no clear how to execute it. And I was let off the hook by being able to jump on board rather than start my own thing. And, well, it took me all of 10 minutes. I went back to the office. It took me 20 minutes to convince them that why would we redesign the wheel? Here's a program that is already running that's working. It's a program that's fundamentally about developing capacity in the communities and in the school. It's recognizing the schools as the most fertile ground is recognizing the principle as the key to unlock all that human potential. So it was a no-brainer for us. So the journey subsequently has been a, a fascinating journey. I've got lots of things that I can share. I won't bore you with that. I thought I'd, I'd mention the one, two classic little things about my experience with Sibella. In the early days, coming from a business where we want things to happen, and if IT goes down, everybody freaks out within a minute. They can't connect. I was getting upset because I'm mailing and I'm phoning Sibella and I'm not getting any response and I'm thinking, how's this going to work out? And then I went on our first visit and I saw the temporary structure and there they had, they had no, no landline. It was working off one little uh, Vodacom card to connect the whole school and all the staff. And I kind of developed a little bit of a tolerance to the fact that Sibella might not be on standby to answer my call every second. <laughs> um, there are many stories like that, but from a personal point of view, it's been certainly very rewarding in the sense of being in a community like that. Firstly, I can relate to the idea you mentioned earlier that going to a community where you know you don't belong, this certainly is my experience arriving in the noon. But to see that what used to be paralysis born out of despair change into action 
um, that's just been transformed by hope has been personally rewarding. To just to see that lots of little things makes up a lot because it is originally like the El Capitan um, concrete slab. But lots of people are doing lots of little things in that community. And I see a lot of smiles, a lot of shiny eyes, and I'm inspired every time I come back. From a learning point of view, I've certainly learned to, to lead wherever I do lead in a slightly different way. When I arrive in the noon, I've got no mandate. I've got no authority. I've got no title. So I certainly have to learn to kind of invite people into the conversation here. First, listen and learn. And, and sit down and close my mouth and open my ears and get a better understanding. So that's been a, a journey for me to learn to, to lead in a different way. Uh, I've certainly learned to look for the possibilities rather than the problems. I arrived there, immediately identify all the things that don't work. And I could easily identify jobless, we're going to do this if I could just get the resources. But soon kind of figured out that they've got lots of strengths that are ready to be implemented if we go down that route instead of identifying and focusing on all the things that aren't working. So that's been rejuvenating. Uh, another surprise, and I'm talking to businesses, business people out there that, that might or might not consider content, uh, jumping in. It's certainly been phenomenal to see the change in our organization. We went into this thing for the, for the motives that I meant up front. Once our staff and our customers and suppliers started seeing what we were doing, we're now seeing a momentum of people coming in. We didn't go out there to do this so we can go and market some corporate strategy. That was never our intent. But word got out, um, suppliers are coming on board. How can we help? But many of the things that Sabella's mentioning from our supplier base. We've now had a customer in Switzerland sponsoring a whole other school and the business partner is sitting here. There. So the, the sister school, primary school in, in the new community has been sponsored by a customer in Switzerland. They want to be part of this journey. Our, our Belgian customer just, Sabella doesn't know yet, sent us a nice check to to contribute to the work because they want to be part of the journey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's been fascinating to see how just making clear that we've got slightly different values and pursuing those have inspired so many people within our own organization where some of the people are on the factory floor and some people are on the admin and some people are managers and they're working together, going to the school together, participating in different things. But people can see that there's a, a different motive than just driving a financial agenda. Um, and yeah, on a, per on a very personal note, I feel a million times less like a tourist in my own country, and that's very, very rewarding. So I can certainly encourage anybody that, that's contemplating. I'd love to cry now. I'd love to listen to the guys that say, you know what they should be doing? <laughs> and you listen for a while, and then you ask them what they do. So <laughs> there have been a few brides that I don't get invited to anymore. Uh, <laughs> But certainly I would, I would invite anybody to, to take part in the adventure and, and there's no real reason to sit on the sidelines. It is, once you get in there, it's a very inspiration, inspirational space and I do salute the, the principles most of all in this journey. Thank you. Thank you.